But let's talk about the accusations then, since you've sure, brought, since you sure, brought it sure. up. They said that you had, uh, you spoke to somebody and asked them, where is your, re uh, where are your relatives, and they gave the location. And that wasn't and me. And this is how myths get created. Okay, let's. That talk. reporter wasn't me. The other story is that you were told that there are no hostages, and then you called out, called up the manager of Oberoi, who told you, yes, we have a hundred, and you said we have a hundred hostages. Therefore, suddenly everybody knew, including the terrorists, that there were a hundred hostages because of Barkha. No, firstly, it's fascinating to me. It's happened in Kargil, it's happened in Mumbai, how I become the symbol for what every other journalist has done. It's like it's all transferred to Barkha. There is only one journalist on the spot, it's Barkha. I find it absolutely like Hemant Karkari's example, the fact that I called out, Chaitanya Kunte said I was responsible for Hemant Karkari's death. Hemant Karkari died the first night I was in Delhi. The Chambers conversation that you report didn't happen with me, happened with another set of television reporters whom I'm actually not going to name. I know who they were, but I'm not going to and name And the Oberoi story? And the Oberoi story, I do remember. I do remember having said at some point, not the exact number, but when there was confusion over the fact that the hotel had been cleared, I did say no, we still have reason to believe that there are people who are trapped as hostages inside. That I did say. I don't believe I was the only one who said it. I think journalists across the board did refer to the fact that people were trapped inside. Did we make, looking back, inadvertent mistakes during the Mumbai siege? Mm. I think so. I think the biggest mistake that we did on day one was to go live. The second day, not because of a government diktat which came three days later, we on our own started transmitting with a 15 minute delay. We didn't know at that time that there were handlers monitoring um, the terrorists who were inside. We got to know this after the siege was over. They also said that you're hysterical, you know, upset, sweaty, hysterical screaming. Hysterical is a style. You want to hate and me, hate me. Hysterical is a style. It's not an ethical question. I mean, I often watch uh, things of myself and I say, could I have done it better? Yeah, sure, I could have done it better. Sometimes. Sometimes I like how I've done it. Let's take Cargill first because I do want to say something about it. Cargill... This mythology of, did she switch a camera light on? Did she ask for the Bofors gun to be fired? Did she use uh, the same sat phones that, by the way, everybody in the army used and therefore positions were given? Crap. I mean, it is absolute crap. And there is no other word for it. In fact, the army chief in his book said, Barkha came to me. I was a young girl then. You know, it really upset me in a way that it doesn't now. I was 26. And I went to him and I said, sir, did I do something wrong? Why are people saying all this thing? And he said, it's such rubbish. He said, when I write my book on Kargil, I'll say this was such rubbish. What about rubbish. that Admiral Suresh Mehta who, who attacked he you? He retracted it. Do you, he, he sent me a letter apologizing. And do you know why I sent a legal notice to Chaitanya Kunte? Because when I wrote to Admiral Mehta and I said, sir, why did you say this when the army chief said something else? He said, you know, my officer showed me a blog. I said, which blog? It was mm. Chaitanya Kunte's blog. Okay. That is why the legal notice was sent to Chaitanya Kunte.